the National Socialist was it was a very largely technological regime. You know, nuclear war is the creation of technology. You know, the gene modifying technology, bio warfare. These are all things that are were either there or almost there, uh, with the capacity to to wreak unimaginable suffering on the entire planet because of the technology. That's not to say the technology is bad. It is to say rather that it must take its place relative to a higher order series of conversations. And what I absolutely want to insist on is that those higher order conversations, they're not mere intuitions. They're not mere, you know, you know, speculative. Oh, we, we can just kind of you know, consult the, 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 the entrails of a goose or something. They're also not mere expressions of the arbitrary desire for power because that's no, not exactly. the central animating spirit. That isn't why you built Ralston. That isn't why you're trying to build Ralston College. It isn't to fulfill your own desire for power. That's not a good motivation. It's not pleasing. It doesn't last. It's not enriching. It's what people turn to when they're bitter and cynical. I grew up in Eastern Canada in a place that you would know, but perhaps not all of your listeners know, in Prince Edward Island in a sort of pastoral, quiet, sleepy, very rural place and a small family farm in a huge, well, comparatively by historic standards, a huge fam by contemporary standards, rather a huge family of uh, seven younger brothers and two younger sisters. My parents, a uh, milk cow. Uh, I don't want to paint too idyllic a picture. Everyone knows family life and farm life is all kinds of kinds of uh, ups and downs. But uh, the point I'm trying to make is that I uh, I had a very kind of intensely wonderful and rich and very actively busy um, uh, childhood and and it set me up in many respects for the discovery of, of philosophy when I went to college and I had the, the immeasurable gift of meeting some teachers who just open worlds to me. I mean, you know what a teacher can do and be, having had them yourself and having been one for so many people. Um, uh, and I, I really fell in love with, uh, with trying to think deeply about, you know, fundamental matters. And not that I was particularly good at it by any means, but just that it was eye-opening for me to see that things I had perhaps intuited in my childhood uh, about the nature of things in some deep sense. We all have these intuitions, whether through nature or music or love or 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 family life or whatever, that there were ways of thinking about those those things. And I spent quite a long time with some wonderful teachers, particularly in the ancient Greek and Latin and then um, medieval tradition, thinking about things and particularly about the nature of the human individual, what it is really, what its, its realization is. Um, Anyway, I mention all that because when I came to the end of my master's degree, I'd gone straight through, you know, doing a lot of, you know, thinking work in a wonderful community, it needs to be said. I just, uh, I had kind of, in a way, had my fill of, of ideas and I, I, I had kind of tapped out. Uh, I'd gone as far as I could in the theoretical at that point and I, I needed to re-engage in the not I wouldn't say the real world, but in the more you know the more the 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 world of 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 uh, of uh, activity and action. And I had a dear friend and mentor of mine named Gary Thorne, who was the the priest at an inner city parish called St George's Church in Halifax, Nova Scotia. And he had been with others, including uh, one of my sisters, had been working in the inner city thinking about, uh, uh, which was, a, I should say, a very rough and uh, dis highly dysfunctional place. Uh, north end of Halifax is, that is, or, or was, and in some respects still is, but not least because of a absolutely catastrophic uh, civic decision. There was a place in Halifax called Africville, a uh, black community uh, that though perhaps was not uh, entirely up to contemporary standards in terms of technology and things, uh, was a vibrant place that uh, Duke Ellington had played there. It was a, a flourishing community. Anyway, the city wanted to build a, a new bridge and part of the foundations of the bridge they wanted to put in Africville. So at least it's the story I've understood um, uh, from my own reading about it. And they, they, they uprooted this entire very vibrant community 
uh, out of the place that had been called Africville and resettled them in pretty dismal inner city housing in the North End. And that was not by any means, I think the only factor, but a very significant moment in the devastation of a community. And uh, when I was there in the late 90s uh, into early 2000s, mid 90s to early 2000s, there were very many, you know, pretty, uh, pretty serious problems from uh, drug and alcohol abuse to uh, prostitution, devastatedly broken families. And my uh, friend Gary Thorne and others had been thinking about what modest, you know, one doesn't think one can solve these really very serious problems, you know, simply walk out and solve them. They're, they're really hard. Um, but what could the parish, that is say, this community do that might be, be meaningful? And so I was with a group of people involved in setting up a, a, a small, a very small, this is a small community, but small uh, youth mentoring and life skills program called St. George's Youth Net. And the idea was to be a kind of network that would pick these, help pick these children up when they fell and to give them, well, our observation, Father Thorne's observation had been over many years that that if you wait until someone has already fallen through the cracks, uh, it's in many respects, and this is a terrible thing to say, I know, but in many respects too late. It is very hard to reach people. Not that it's impossible. I believe in redemption. I believe in the whole possibility of things being turned around uh, right down to the most, you know, tiniest fibers of my being. But the point is, is that it is very, very hard to do that with someone who's 16 or 17 or 18, already fallen out of, uh, you know, dropped out of school, you know, had a baby, whatever. Um, so we thought about ways of, we thought about what we could do to, to expand the horizons of these children and youth of all ages, you know, really, but uh, starting with them as young as, as, as school age and working with them. And, and I won't go on at length about this, but what I learned was a couple of things that are still really, really with me today. The first is that human, the realization of the individual has to come down at a very fundamental level to the individual. Like no one else can live your life for you. You know, no one else can kind of come in and just do it for you. That, that would, that would, that would, that would deny all of the agency that is at the heart of human, you know, fulfillment and 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 the driving force of this is me. This meanness of life has to come from me. Um, and in a way, I think that's a standpoint that that at some loose level, you know, people would call the political right seems to understand that you know there has to be agency is fundamental, and yet that is a totally incomplete standpoint at the same time uh because uh you know we don't simply throw children out into the woods and say you know all right come back when you're fully formed you know you know writing books and playing the playing the flute and 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 fully able to take on the complexities of life it, one of the things that's so striking to me is that it as people have ability one of the things they will throw all of themselves into is the raising of their children and so damn well they should uh, my wife and i have not been blessed with children unfortunately but i, I as the eldest of, of a big family and having observed and my friends and many others you know they will just give everything they can to carefully tend to this to the development of each individual and they're not all the same even in a single family you can only have two children